Welcome, everybody, to another episode of the Unquestionably Raw podcast. Tonight, we are previewing the Orlando Magic, and we're previewing the 2016-2017 NBA season. Uh, Joining us again is special guest Keith Smith of RealGM.com. We've got DJ Gonzo Starr, Matt Miller, and myself. Um, So, Keith, thanks for coming back on, man. Uh, Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Great to have you. Um, so we're going to roll right in, uh, looking at the Orlando Magic. Um, they've made some changes in the offseason, of course. Uh, the Oladipo trade uh, for Serge Ibaka um, and some other moves to kind of strengthen their front court. Um, what do you see um, as far as player projections and then as far as the depth chart goes uh, for the team? So I think as far as the depth chart goes, you're going to see there's not really that many starting roles up for grabs. You'll see Peyton. He's got the point guard role pretty locked in as the starter. Fournier will be the shooting guard. They fully intend to play Aaron Gordon at the small forward. Frank Vogel's actually said he envisions him somewhat like their version of Paul George, which will be interesting to see how that develops. Power forward's definitely going to be Ibaka. And then opening night, it'll be uh, Vucevic to start at center because uh, Biombo's actually suspended the carryover from the playoff game with That's the Raptors. Right. <laughs> so he won't be available that's all right. night. Um, but that that's probably the spot that's most up for grabs. Um, they were very open at the time that they signed Biombo at his presser. I was actually there, and we talked about it, and they said that the intention is to let those two battle it out um, in training camp. I think Vucevic probably starts to to begin the season beyond just the opening night. I think he'll be the guy there um, just because I think they need his offense in the starting lineup. And then the big thing that the Magic have lacked the last couple of seasons that they've got this year, which is nice, is they actually have quality depth um, for a change. So they've got Biombo, they've got Jeff Green. Um, I know we, we, I, I'm very fond of saying the only thing consistent about Jeff Green is his inconsistency, <laughs> um, but he'll be a but he'll he'll be a good you know backup um, uh, for um, for them. And then you've got Mario Hazonia back there, DJ Augustin behind Alfred Payton, and um, CJ Wilcox is another guy that they like. With Jody Meeks is going to be out to start off the season further foot surgery. So it looks like C.J. Wilcox might get some run um, right out of the gate um, as the backup two guard. Most teams tend to go about 10 deep usually to start the season and then trim that rotation down as the year goes along. But that's what it looks like it'll be for the Magic. Okay. Gonzo, what do you uh, like about uh, the Magic uh, as far as their their depth chart goes? Uh, What I like about the depth chart, uh, I agree with uh, the trade with Serge Ibaka is that uh, it gave them a rim protector, uh, gave them guys who can grab rebounds, and if possible, that could stretch the floor, uh, could stretch the floor for them. Uh, I like the bench. I, I'm I, exactly what Keith said. I like the fact they have Jeff Green. He's a veteran. He is inconsistent at times, but I, I think he can he, he can do good being a six man coming off the bench. Uh, you got. Uh, Jody Meeks, like I said, later on in the season, I guess, you know, he'll, he'll be coming off the bench. He's a good shooter. They got C.J. Watson coming off the bench, another good shooter. And Nick Johnson, uh, I used to watch him in Arizona, and I watched him in a few games with Houston. When he gets minutes, he, he can actually play. Uh, so so I, I, I like what they have. They have Mario Hazonia. They they have a lot of depth. I, I didn't know this about this team. I, I actually, did, like, earlier today was my, my first time looking at the roster. I'm actually impressed with what they have, especially in the Eastern Conference. I mean, wow. They they kind of improved a lot. Yeah, Matt, what do you think? I, I totally agree with, with Keith and Gonzo. They they really do have a lot of depth. I mean, Keith touched on on the starting lineup, and and I do really like Aaron Gordon. So I kind of see. I don't know if he's going to be Paul George, but I think he's just really really talented. You know, he's not a great shooter, but he shoots a good ball. It's not broke or anything. And I mean, I know it's just summer league, but you've seen. The years he's really you can see he's really improving his shooting um he, he could really always handle the ball pretty well um super athletic he'll be able to defend um and then on the bench i really do like their bench and we didn't touch on uh, uh what's his name shoot let me pull it up uh, was with the with the uh, cj watson good 
good, oh, another yeah, good yeah. veteran point guard who's you know he's been with Thibodeau's Bulls, right. so he's been on some 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 really good teams. And then it's going to be interesting to see what Hazonia gives them this year off the bench because I actually think he may end up being that scorer instead of Jeff Green off the bench because you know he's a tremendous shooter, can put it on the floor, athletic. I think he can really provide them with a lot of offense off that bench. I'm I'm really high on Hazonia. I was very high on him coming out of the out of the draft. Um, hope to see him get quality minutes and actually be able to defend because that's what Frank Vogel is going to look for. Can you defend? Um, and you've got Biombo back there to pick up, you know, some of your mistakes. But at the same time, Hazonia's got to become a quality defender because we know he can shoot um, and he can get to the rim. Um, so hopefully, he can prove that he can defend a little bit. Um, interesting with the, with the Magic, they actually have, um, and correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Keith, they've got 13 roster spots locked up, and there's two spots that, that are open with uh, Cliff Alexander, uh, Nick Johnson, as Gonzo mentioned, uh, Domjan uh, Rudez uh, that played with um, Minnesota, and who's what's the other one? Um, They've got uh, Brendan Dawson. Yeah, Brendan Dawson from the Clippers. Yeah, and then uh, Kevin Murphy and our uh, and uh, Rinze Onowaku are the other two guys. Yeah, and camp. and Murphy Murphy has been, basically he's been in a bunch of training camps, but he hasn't done much since uh, he played a season in, in Utah. Then you've got uh, Anuako, who played overseas, of course, last season, came back, uh, played a little bit uh, in the D League, and. Uh, kind of bounced around. He was on the Cavs before. Um, it'll be interesting to see if a guy like Cliff Alexander can make the make the magic and uh, actually uh, prove what he can do because he was not healthy last year in Portland. Um, Rudez can can shoot the three. He's more of a stretch four. Um, and then you've got Nick Johnson, of course, um, basically able to to score. And he's going to transition more to the point guard, I think. And so it's going to be kind of a, a battle there because you do have CJ Watson and a bunch of others at that spot. So, but they're definitely not lacking depth. Uh, that's for sure. So, um, for once, that's finally a, a strong point for the Magic. Yeah, and I'll say um, the the nice thing is Johnson, Murphy, and Onowaku, they earned their spots by by their playing summer league with the Magic. Um, I had an opportunity to see all their summer league games here in Orlando. Um, and those guys, they, you know, uh, Murphy and Onowaku by playing very hard, um, really earned their spots. They really, you know, got after it all week long down here. And then um, Nick Johnson ran the point for them, and that they, he's going to have to be able to run the point. You know, he, he doesn't shoot it well enough to be an undersized shooting guard, but ridiculously athletic. That guy's got speed for days, can really get up um, when he's got the ball in his hands. Um, Cliff Alexander, I think, is the one a lot of people here would love to see. You know, he was a he was a big time prospect going into college, and then just kind of kind of drifted off. Never really became what people thought. And then a lot of people think think Rudez probably has the the, the inside track at that last spot, um, or maybe the 14th spot, um, just because of shooting ability, and that's something the team's going to need. One thing to keep in mind with the Magic, they tend to open the season with only 14 players on the roster. Um, they don't usually go in um, with their, their roster maxed out at the 15. Um, they like that flexibility. Rob Hennigan likes that flexibility to have that open roster spot. So that's something you, you might have those six guys competing for one spot. Wow. That's going to be very competitive. I'll say yep. that. Yep. Um, so what are the magic expectations this season? Uh, they missed the playoffs the last few seasons. Uh, obviously a new head coach. It is the Eastern Conference, so – Things can change overnight, and teams can surprise. Uh, the Magic can surprise a lot of other teams. Um, what do you kind of foresee their expectations being key? Yeah, I think they they expect to be in the playoffs this year. They are their moves this year were to accelerate their rebuild. They've been in that rebuilding phase really since trading Dwight Howard, and they they accumulated all that young talent. So, Vukovic. Fournier, Gordon, Hazonia, and then Oladipo, who was ultimately traded. The goal was keep piling up young assets and then pounce to get, get established pieces when they became available, which obviously is what happened with that Serge Ibaka trade. 
So they intend on making the playoffs. Frank Vogel wasn't hired to come here and you know, be a babysitter and kind of help the rebuild along. It's time to step forward. And one thing that's going on down here in Orlando that a lot of people, you know, nationally may not fully pick up on is, right, we're right in the heart of college football country, right? So down here, if the Magic aren't good at the beginning of the season, and even when they are good, no one cares because it's football season. You know, so basketball season here for most locals doesn't start till around Christmas. Then if the Magic are struggling later in the season, the Orlando City soccer team has actually really taken off and become extremely popular. There's been a few nights over the last couple of years where they have outdrawn the Magic by quite a bit. And you'll go to the, to the Amway Center and the arena's, you know, half quarter full because people have adopted that soccer team like crazy down here. So the Magic have to be good. You know, and it's a very casual fan base here in Orlando. Um, being that I live here, I can you know say this with no problem. No one's from here. You know, everybody's from somewhere else. So that's a little bit of the challenge. People came with their own teams and their allegiances. So it's important for the Magic to win over those casual fans. So I think they want to get out to a quick start, have a really nice season, be competitive, get back into the playoffs, and build that interest back in the team. Because when – they're in the Dwight Howard years. People loved them, and the, the arena was full every night. So that's where they want to get back to. Okay. Gonzo, what are your uh, expectations for the Magic? Uh, you know, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like the way I see I saw some Milwaukee. Like I look, I looked at Milwaukee's bench, uh, depth, coaching, and honestly, I could see them being a six-seven uh, AC team. Honestly, like they have enough depth. Not to mention, they have playoff-tested uh, veterans as well. They have Jeff Green, uh, playoff guy. Serge Ibaka, playoff guy. You got uh, C.J. Watson, playoff guy. And played under on, under Bogle with uh, with the Bulls, and he's played with Thibodeau as well, which is he's, he's an okay defender. Uh, you got enough guys with enough length, uh, athleticism. You got three-point shooting. Like, I, I don't see a reason why they shouldn't make the playoffs. Like, looking at this roster and what they have and having decent coach. And one thing about Frank Vogel, I have to give him a little credit for. Scott Skiles has always been known to be a defensive coach. I think Frank Vogel is a little more balanced. I think he's a defensive coach to a degree. But I think he, he can he can spread enough defense, and he can probably he's probably going to get enough offense out of them as well uh, with the talent on the team. So I, I look at uh, Orlando absolutely in the playoffs. Okay. Matt, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, I think this team definitely can can make the playoff six, seven, eight seed. I mean, last year they actually, if I'm not mistaken, they got off to a pretty good start last year. The first month, month and a half of the season, they looked really good, and then after that, they started to tumble. The whole thing with, with Styles, and I'm actually curious. I want to ask Keith this: like, what was that like? Why did Styles just suddenly just he's done? Yeah, he lost the team. That's the, the thing. He can be a tough guy yeah. to play for and be around if things aren't going well. And that's really what happened was he, you know, the team just at, by by mid, right? So they hit January, and they were actually a pretty good team. And then they went, and went on a very long losing streak, and they came out of that. He, he's tough on the players. He, he has no um, hesitancy to call them out. You know, in the media, if they're not performing the way you know he thinks they should be, with a young team, I think a lot of guys they just they, they weren't having it. You know, and but once the the winning ways stopped, or or at least the almost 500 ways stopped, it was just tough to take. And at that point, the guys started tuning him out. And he lost the team. You, you could tell by the beginning of uh, well, middle of March, beginning of April, that it was he was done here in Orlando or they were going to make wholesale changes to the roster. And obviously, you know, it was time for him, for him to move on in. They still made some you yeah. know, big roster moves as well. Yeah, that's weird because usually Scott Stiles makes it a couple seasons before they yeah. tune him out. But I think this wasn't a, a – you know, they were a very young team. And I don't – I can't remember Stiles taking over extremely young teams like this. So that I'm sure that that was definitely because, you know, these young guys now, they don't take that old school style. They can only take so much. They don't want to be called out. But yeah, this 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 is going to be a good basketball team this year. I think they're they're going to be real good. I, I think as long as they stay healthy, the, the the young guys develop. They've got 
they've got a nice mix of youth and veterans on this team, which, which I think is going to really help them. What I want to see out of the Magic the most is what what step can Aaron Gordon take to get that next echelon and kind of establish himself as a small forward. Then with Fournier, can he take on a increased scoring load on a consistent basis? And finally, with Alfred Payton, is he going to turn it on and actually be the point guard of the uh, that team, or is he always going to be a project that they look at as, okay, he can, you know, run the team, but he can't really shoot. Is he going to develop a shot enough for teams to stay uh, consistent, you know, defending him? Um, and so those questions are there in my mind, but I think overall they can sneak into the A spot because looking at it on paper, I would pick Orlando over a team like Atlanta uh, as far as on paper and, and kind of what they have. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if they can slide into that seventh or eighth spot. Um, surprise a lot of people because many, many uh, projections that I've seen has Orlando down at the bottom with Miami, Brooklyn, and Philly. And I'm like, I don't know about that, you know, um, seeing them that bad. But it'll be interesting to see. Um, so, Keith, what are uh, three keys that you think will – um, make or break or help this team or hinder this team uh, this season? So I'll start off with something that's going to make them is going to be, and I think we all have touched on this so far, it's going to be their defense. I think they're going to be one of the better defensive teams in the league. Frank Vogel, great defensive coach, always builds a solid system. They've got all the pieces in place to be a really good defensive team. Um, you know, wh whether it's Vucevic in there, or Biombo, if it's Booch, the other guys can cover for him enough. If it's Biombo, you know, that front line of Biombo, Abaka, and Gordon, that has the potential to just be, you know, one of the best defensive front groups in the, in the league. Fournier is an under, underrated defender. He can usually get it done. And Peyton's a really good defender, too. A lot of length, quickness in that lineup. I think you're going to see Bobo, you know, deploy them together. None of the backups are really um, – you know, awful defenders either, which is, you know, a lot of times off the bench, you've got guys coming in that just can't hold their own defensively. Um, so I, I think they're going to be an excellent defensive team. Um, second key for me is kind of the offense. Can they um, hard to see where offense is going to come from. Abaka, you know, made all these, you know, um, statements about wanting to be more involved in Oklahoma City and do more and you know, be more of a go-to guy. And I think the challenge for him is, what's he going to do? He's a jump shooter. He's a jump shooting big man. There's no problem with that. That's good, but play your role. Stay in your lane. It's not like you're going to start dumping it in the post to him or getting him in the mid post area and he's going to face guys up and take him off the dribble. It's just not going to happen at this point in his career. So that's going to be the challenge. Can Aaron Gordon shoot it enough? Uh, I think, Matt, you, you mentioned it, right, that he looks like his jump shots, you know, never look broken, right? No. He can shoot. The great thing is reports out of the Team USA practices was he looked good, is that he was really stroking the ball well, playing, you know, doing a good job, getting pull-up jump shots off the dribble, which is going to be huge. He's going to be the three. But I just go back to I struggle anytime you have a lead guard that can't shoot the ball at all. That guy better be able to get to the basket at will, create for his teammates. Peyton's good at that, but I don't know that he's going to be good enough. So that's where, you know, I struggle. Teams are going to really sag off him. By the end of the year last year, the Magic couldn't run pick and roll actions with Peyton at all because the other team just dropped so low behind it and just waited for him to come. To take the shots. So that's going to be, be a struggle. They've really got to get that figured out. And then the, the, really the third team is, how do the young guys, the third key rather, how do the young guys step up? Does Gordon make that evolution from a you know, potential superstar to, to borderline superstar this year? Can Fournier handle a bigger load now that he's going to be probably the main offensive weapon in the starting five, which I actually think he can. I think he's going to go for 20 plus points per game this year with a higher usage rate, you know, I think he can handle it. And then, you know, can, can they get anything? Can Peyton show some improvement from just a passable shooter? 
or he needs to be defended. Those are going to be the big things that are going to really make or break this season for Orlando. Okay. Gonzo, what are some keys? Well, I have three, and the first one is like 1A and 1B. Uh, is defense and development of the young players. And when I mean development of the young players, I mean uh, Alfred Payton developing the shot, Alec, uh, uh, Aaron Gordon uh, developing, uh, whether it be a post game or getting much better at a jump shot, uh, Perzonia developing him, developing him into the star that I, me are honestly, I think this guy can be a star. When I saw him in summer league and the way he played, this guy is a, you can tell he's a pro basketball player. I think he's, I think he has a lot more experience than a lot of the young guys who are in the league already. And maybe it's from playing in Europe, um, uh, being a professional ball, uh, professional overseas, but the guy can play. I honestly think him and Fournier can be two stars. And I, I got to ride with Keith on this one. Fournier can actually average 20 points per game. I, 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 I can definitely see that. Um, consistency. When I say consistency, consistency on the defensive end and consistent three-point shooting. Uh, and my last one I'm going to say is X factors. Who are going to be your X factors off the bench? If Horzonia is going to be the guy off the bench, hey, I want you to develop him to being that, that lethal, this, this lethal killer that I think he could be on the court. The guy has game. Like when I first saw him play, I'm like, whoa, this guy can play basketball. Uh, so uh, Herzonia. Uh, another person too, um, who I was kind of uh, interested in too, and I've said this before earlier, earlier on. Nick Johnson, I want him to get more minutes. I think this guy can play basketball too. I think that Nick Johnson can. I think he's he's a great, he's a good scorer, but I think he can run the point guard position coming off the bench. And he had, and, and not and and also he has he has size. Like C.J. Watson's uh, is small, but Nick Johnson kind of has kind of a. He has a bigger body than C.J. Watson to me, so I, I think that he could probably uh, get a bulk of those uh, point guard minutes coming off the bench. Those are my three. Okay. What do you think, Matt? Well, first I'm going to start off. Since we have a new coach, we've got Frank Vogel in, in Orlando now. I think role, defining everybody's role you know, on this team is going to be huge. If you've got the mix of the veterans and the youth, so define these roles so everybody knows where they stand. I think that's, that's going to be the first key. Two, obviously defense. And, and just getting after it every night. And I don't see that being a problem because, you know, Frank Vogel, you know, great defensive, you know, sets that he runs, I think. And he's a defensive-minded coach. You know, kind of reminds me a little of Stan Van Gundy in a sense. Stresses defense but also wants his guys to be able to score. Um, and third, I think, is definitely going to be perimeter shooting because if they don't make shots, then that, you know, making the playoffs now is up in the air. They've got to be able to make shots. And with a guy like Alfred Payton, he doesn't have to be, I mean, he, obviously he's not going to be Steph Curry, hell, he does, you know, but he has to be a capable shooter. A guy, if you leave him, hey, he's going to make 35% of his open threes. You know, be able to, you know, pull up and hit a 15-foot pull-up jump shot if he has to, get to the rim, make, make free throws. He's not a very good free throw shooter. And that's going to be big, too. You want your point guard to be able to shoot free throws. So those those are probably the big three for me. Okay. Um, one thing I wanted to mention is uh, Biombo against Bushevik is basically you've got defense, you've got offense. So if, if Bushevik is going to be off the bench, is he going to accept that role? Kind of clearly defining what's mm -hmm. going to happen there. Are you going to be that second team anchor and basically um, you know lead that that second team? Um, and is Biombo going to be able to be consistent enough as a starter? Because, yes, he had a great run in Toronto, but he didn't have a great run in Charlotte. Um, he was marginal. Um, he's not an offensive scorer there. Um, so kind of have to have a balance, um, you know, of offense, defense there, and for both, both guys to remain happy in that role. Um, have to see Mario Hazonia step it up this year um, as a possible six-man off the bench. Um, very, very capable that that could happen. Um, and I think that's going to be a key to their success if they can get, you know, nine to, to 11 points out of him, um, you know, off, coming off the bench with consistent minutes. And then Alfred Payton's my final one. Um, basically, Keith, as you mentioned, yes, he can drive to the rim. He can set guys up. Um, we all mentioned it about his shooting. He's got to be able to do more than set guys up and largely run a team to remain a starter. 
Um, because if they're going to think long term, okay, we make the playoffs this year. Next year, we've got to make the you know a higher seed and go further. Are they going to be able to do that long term with Alfred Payton at the helm? I'm not so sure um, that that they can. I'm not a big fan of Alfred Payton. I'm, I don't think he's you know borderline going to be like out of the league or anything like that. But I think the way it's going right now, if you can't hit a consistent jumper, you know, two years away, he might end up being a bench guy that that um, can't get out of that role. Kind of like Michael Carter Williams, he can't shoot, so he's locked on the bench and um, could very well see it happen. And they're going to have to figure out, um, like I mentioned earlier, with Aaron Gordon, is he going to be able to consistently play that small forward spot, or is he going to have that tweener label? And with Abaka there, is Abaka going to be that stretch shooter, and so is is Gordon, or is one of them going to actually try to play inside um, on the low block a little bit, kind of clearly defining where they're going to uh, get touches and, and things like that. Um, so those are my keys. Um, with Frank Vogel at the helm this season, uh, we all know he's a defensive coach, but Keith, what do you think that the concept around the team and just the, the dynamic as a whole looks like compared to last season? Yeah, so far in every um, pu- public appearance with Vogel, he's mentioned defense, right? That's that's where he makes his bones. So, so I think you'll see that be, be the big focus for them. I think that's why they went out and got Biombo. He is almost perfect for what Vogel wants. He wants a big who can get out there, hedge on the guards, but then he'll recover, get all the way back to the rim, provide that help. And Biombo can do that if they're. Might have lost Keith there, but we could go back to him. Yeah, we'll go back to him. So, Gonzo, um, what what do you think about what you're uh, – what's anticipated out of – Frank, oh, there he is. Sorry, guys. Did I cut out on you? Yeah. yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Okay. I don't know where I was at. But <laughs> yeah, well, what I was saying is everything they're going to build will be built around Biombo and Ibaka's ability to get up, hedge on the pick and roll, defend the guards, and then get all the way back to the rim. Um, that's going to be huge for them. When those two guys are in the game together, it's going to be tough to score on those guys inside. So that's going to be the, the first piece. Then offensively, I think he wants to play a little bit of um, four, four out, one in basketball, um, especially when Vooch is in the lineup. Um, but Vooch is an underrated mid-range shooter. You know, he's got a nice, um, you know, touch from about 15, 18 feet. So he hasn't been able to extend that back past the line yet. But so I think what you're going to see is them try to play a little more four out. Oh, Gremlin's got him. Yeah, Gremlin's got him. Oh, there's that. Yeah, there we go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> We've got a little storm rolling through here. So okay. <laughs> I apologize. Um, right. so, so I was going. So so you guys jump back in there. And but but basically where it's going was four, four out. Um, basketball, and I think with uh, with opening up those driving lanes for Peyton, so that he can get to the rim and make plays for others, and let guys like Ibaka, Gordon dive off of um, Peyton penetration and get to the basket easy. That's what they're going to do: is try to manufacture as much easy offense as possible. Okay, uh, Gonzo, what do you what do you think as far as Vogel? Um, we all know defense, of course. Uh, what do you see other other than than defense? There with him. I, I see him, uh, like I said earlier on in the show, I, it talk, I talked about how I think Frank Vogel is a defensive coach, but he's more balanced. I think he's going to I think he's going to get the most out of uh, the offensive players on offense. Like he's going to utilize Vucevic, uh, Vucevic. Excuse me, I'm saying his name wrong. I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, uh, Ibaka, uh, getting Bismack Bayambu involved in the game. Uh, and I think I, I might have to agree with Keith again. I think he might actually run a four-out one in. You know what I'm saying? I mean, because Busevich can hit the mid-range shot, and a lot of people don't talk about that. You know, like the, the guy, the guy. When Busevich first came to the league, I didn't really think he was going to be like that great of a player. You know, because considering he's on Philadelphia, right? <laughs> I'm like, nah, like he's not going to be that good. But I think that they're going to involve. They're going to have the offense around him. You know. Uh, I just want Alfred Payton to develop 
a decent enough jump shot uh, to where opponents won't uh, won't be able to jump in and kind of defend other guys. You have to kind of stay home with him a little bit. Man, if he could shoot at least 33, 32% from threes, I mean, that would be a big plus for Orlando. Mm-hmm. I, if he can do that, um, I, that, that, that will make people stay stay on him, stay home on him so he won't be able to get a lot of those you know, sort of open shots and then keep them from helping off on, like, Busevich double team and trapping. Uh, so I'm looking for more balance this year. I think Scott Scott Scouts is, and that's been a history with Scott Scouts even in Chicago. Like he's he's a real tough minded, defensive minded minded coach. And the same with Tibbs almost. It's like they it's defense, 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 and it wears you down on the offensive end because everything is just all about defense. And we saw with the with the Bulls how it kind of broke the Bulls down. Even with Scott Scouts, how the Bulls pretty much had like no offense, but they had all this great defense. I think Vogel's going to balance that out. It's going to be offense. But they're they're going to be well def- coached well defensively, but they're going to be good on the offensive end as well. I'm sorry right. if I made that too long. No, 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 you're good. No, uh, what you what do you think, Matt? They, they, Keith and Dogs will pretty much hit hit on on most of the things that he's going to do. So I'll just touch on on one small thing. I think having Vogel there, I think he's really going to develop Aaron Gordon. And I know I've talked a lot about Aaron Gordon, but I do really like his game, and I think Frank Vogel is is the perfect coach for him. You know, as Keith said, he wants to use him a lot like they use Paul George in, in Indiana. And he has the skill set to do it. So I think that that's going to be really interesting. I think that's one big thing Frank Bull is going to bring to this basketball team. Uh, the the thing, the biggest difference I see is transparency with the players. Um, Bogle is going to be honest with his players. He's going to, de- you know, basically demand that you work hard for your role. But it's not like Styles, where you're going to get yelled at and put down in front of the media, and and actually, you know, basically feel like, you know, you're trying to do a good job and you're doing everything you can, but you can't make a single mistake. And Scott Styles ends up having that kind of bully mentality, where I don't think Vogel has a way of being that veteran coach that demands something out of you, but at the same time can do it in a way that reaches you as a player and also can make you better in the long term. Uh, so he's going to be great for the development of guys like Aaron Gordon, Evan Fournier, um, Mario Hazonia. Um, so I'm really looking forward to to, to those. And, and hopefully he can get uh, a lot out of Alfred Payton as well. Um, definitely, you know, hope my expectation for, for Payton is totally wrong and he turns into a, you know, great franchise point guard for them. Um, our last question is, uh, that we're going to touch on. Keith, give me a bold prediction for Orlando this season. Well, it sounds like you guys are leaning kind of towards where I am, where you like them too. Um, but what I will say is I think that they'll make the playoffs this year. I think defensively, you know, we're all starting to sound like a broken record about the defense. Mm-hmm. But I will say that they are going to be really good. Defense travels well in the NBA. Um, if you're sound defensively, you'll be in every game. I play a lot of 84 to 82 games this year. It might not be the most exciting uh, basketball to watch, um, but I think they're gonna. I think they're gonna get just over 500, get into the playoffs this year on the very back end. You know, somewhere seven, maybe eight C um, is where they'll be. If not, there's no way they're gonna be down in the Brooklyn Philadelphia range. They're just gonna be too good defensively for that to happen. So I think you'll see them down. Um, yeah, down towards the bottom of the playoff picture, but I do think they're going to get in. Okay. Gonzo, what's the ball prediction? Uh, playoff team, but anywhere between six and seven. One of those two picks. It will be a six okay. or seven Steve playoff team. Okay. Okay. I like it. Uh, Matt, what's your bold prediction? All right. Here comes my – I'm going to kind of stick with the theme that I've gone with with most of my bold predictions, I think, except for Brooklyn. And I'm going to say Aaron Gordon all-star this year. Okay. I'm gonna stick with my theme. Yes. Okay. I was gonna go a different player because I think that Evan Fournier has a chance that he could actually uh, teeter the line, depending if he can get in that 20 point range. Uh, Fournier could slide and, and make an All Star team. Um, but uh, my my main bold prediction is is gonna be that um, they lock up the seventh seed. Um, and they actually could upset somebody, um, depending who that second seed is. If they get, if Toronto is the second seed, 
I could see Orlando taking Toronto out. Absolutely. Um, and so that that's a really, really bold early prediction. We don't know how the seeds are going to play out, but – um, definitely could see them in that seventh range, if not eighth for sure. Um, and uh, really looking forward to, to Orlando season this year. Uh, so that wraps up the show. Uh, Keith, thank you again for joining us. And, and will you let everybody know where they can find uh, find you and, and uh, see some of your work? Because you've got a lot of great articles that you uh, put out. So. Thank you. Appreciate the kind words. Um, so I write for Real GM. Dot com. I've right now I'm in the middle of reviewing division by division off season recaps. But what um really, right everybody does one of those, but it's put a little bit of a different twist. We're not only grading this off season, but giving each team a long term grade as well for what their flexibility looks like going forward. So in some cases a team might have a really nice um off season this year, but might have done some things that sabotage them a little more long term. So a little bit of a different look there. For today's fastbreak.com, I am uh, covering the Orlando Magic for them. Got a series of articles up for them. Uh, really going into do deep dive scouting reports on each one of the new players. Um, so if there's Magic fans out there and you want a little, or want to learn a little bit more about Bismack Biombo's game or Serge Ibaka's game beyond what you've probably seen in highlights, you know, um, really went into you know what what side of the floor do they like to be on? How uh, how do they look in the post, the mid post? What shoulder do they shoot over? Um, what are their games like defensively? Re- really dove, dove deep. You guys um, there for the Magic. Um, pretty soon coming out there, we'll ha- I'll have a little bit of a lesser deep dive, but something on all the camp guys that are coming in for them. Hopefully that'll be up uh, early next week. And then I'm also uh, covering the Boston Celtics for CelticsBlog.com. Got a uh, few few pieces up there um, for, for them so far. I've mostly um, written on new new guys coming in, so mostly their camp guys focused around. You know, I, I like to stay in my lane, salary cap, roster building, those kind of things. But as the season gets into it, you'll see more from me as far as you know, what we're actually seeing on the court and those types of things. Okay, great. Um, and just to let everybody know, Keith is going to be back on for the Boston Celtics uh, season preview. Um, and we'll hopefully be able to get them on for some Western Conference teams as well. Um, and so I want to let everybody know uh, you can check out the replay of this show or any of our other podcasts um, by going to our YouTube page, of course, Unquestionably Raw Podcast, or you can check us out on iTunes in audio form. Uh, look up Unquestionably Raw Podcast, and we're there. Um, and finally, just to let everybody know kind of what's on tap, uh, tomorrow night, uh, 6 p.m. Uh, we're doing an NBA 2K17 review show for all you video game uh, players out there. Uh, Monday, we've got the Detroit Pistons, uh, 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, Wednesday, we've got the New York Knicks with uh, special guest Peter Vesey coming on uh, with us. That's going to be 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern as well. Um, and then uh, Friday, we've got the Chicago Bulls preview. Uh, 9 p.m. Eastern as well. Um, So thank you, everybody, for joining us, and we will catch you next time.